What is up, brothers and sisters? It's Jay Campbell, and you're listening to the Jay Campbell Podcast. Join me for regular deep dives with amazing beings whose work is manifesting a golden age. And remember, you create your reality by your focused thoughts, conscious words, and intentional actions. Raise your vibration to optimize your love creation. Hey guys and gals, what's going on? Don't ever wait for your doctor to order blood tests. With Private MD Labs, you can get your blood test prescription online in under one minute and go directly to over 4,000 lab locations in the United States. They offer every blood test imaginable at affordable prices with highly accurate results from tried and true state-of-the-art blood testing diagnostics. In fact, I've been using Private MD Labs for more than a decade. Their blood tests are much more in-depth and accurate than any at-home pinprick or worthless saliva test. Skip the intrusive doctor questions and get the exact tests that I recommend. Be proactive and get your panels today. Go to privatemdlabs.com forward slash JC to take 15% off your order. Send you guys love and light. Hey guys and girls, wherever you might be around the world, I am Jay Campbell and you are listening to the Jay Campbell podcast. And I'm very excited today to be joined in my StreamYard virtual studio with Master Yoda behind me. And of course, my amazing ex, my amazing guest, Garrett Sulfiter, who is the author of the New Fit Method. Garrett and I actually met in um, Austin in March of 2020, right before it went to shit. And so it's actually awesome to have him here today. But uh, Garrett, man, how are you, brother? I'm I'm good. It's great to be here. And it, yeah, that timing was pretty incredible to meet right in March of 2020. Oh my gosh. And we had no <laughs> idea what was coming down the pipeline a week or two later. <laughs> so, so funny story to add to this, and I may have shared this on the Jay Campbell podcast before. Uh, so humor me. Um, so when we left from there, which I think was it, it, it was over on Sunday, right? I think I left Monday morning. I don't remember. Is there a Sunday night or Monday morning we left? But we, we actually had a trip planned with two other couples to go to Cabo San Lucas. And we left on Tuesday and we were there till Sunday. And of course, when we landed in Cabo on Tuesday afternoon, flying from Southern California, that's when the, you know, the S hit the fan. And everybody was like, oh, you got to come back. They're locking everybody down, blah, blah, blah. And my wife and I, I swear to God, Garrett, we're like, nope, we're not, we're not coming back. This is our trip. We planned this six months ago, five months ago, whatever. We're going to stay. And, 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 and as, as you know, we create our reality. We stayed. Our flight was Sunday afternoon. Late Sunday afternoon, we got into LAX. There was no one there on that Sunday night. Um, came through customs, no problem, literally got in an Uber, went home to where we lived at the time in our, our suburb in West Covina. And within an hour and a half, I'm not kidding you, they announced full lockdown at the airports. I mean, literally, bro, if we would have waited five hours, we'd have been stuck in Mexico for a month or who knows how long. I mean, I heard stories of people that were in South America, Americans, who had to charter private flights, who had to pull all sorts of games to just go home. So, I mean, like, you know, it was, again, the energy and frequency of the universe was like, nope, you're going to get home. It's going to be cool and everything's going to work out. I mean, I'm not kidding you. Like, literally, we got home at like eight o'clock that night. And I remember at 930, people started texting me and said, well, they just locked down the, the, the borders. <laughs> Dang. Wow. I guess if you are going to get stuck somewhere, Cabo is not, not a bad place. That would not have been a bad place, but it would not have worked for the kids. It was just. That's right. That's, life. yeah. Yeah, it, it, would, yeah. it would have been bad, but I mean, it's crazy to think about that because as you know, from that day, and I think it was March 26th, March 25th or March 26th, we were all locked out until, remember, I think it was June, right? I think it was all April and May was completely locked. Yeah, we ours ended here in Texas sooner than in other places, but even right. us, it was two months here and other places were an extra months beyond that. New York was five months, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah no, I mean, I mean, bro, like, California was the same, uh, especially Los Angeles County where I lived at the time. But I mean, we, there was no gyms that were open. That was it. They never yeah. even reopened. I told you I moved down here to Marietta 
in September. Actually, we moved in in October because we did some work on the house that we bought. But uh, I remember, you know, driving by an Anytime Fitness where I live and th there's people in there training and they're not wearing masks. And I get in and I go in and I meet the owner of the gym and I'm like, uh, you, you, nobody's wearing a mask. And he's literally looking at me like, uh, bro, no one's ever worn a mask. I literally hugged the guy and I said, here, I, I need to sign up. I want to sign up an annual membership for me and my wife and my daughter. And he was just like looking at me. He was like, okay, cool. Well, cool. You know, but I was like, yes. But uh, dude, it's an honor to have you on the podcast. Like I said, guys, I met Garrett at the show uh, for uh, a peer iron, which is uh, Dr. Daniel Stickler and his lovely wife. And we talked and we, he's got some amazing technology. So today's show is going to be epic. Um, Garrett, let me just ask you, like I ask all the Jay Campbell podcast guests, What's going on on planet Earth right now, brother? Well, there's there's a lot going on. We're trying to stay in our lane and help people get out of pain and help them recover faster from injuries and get back to doing the things that they love to do. So trying to share some semblance of of goodness. Beautiful. So yeah, that was that was very convenient. See, I always put people right on the spot and they can go as deep as they want or they can get right back to the show topic. And he's like, dude, I'm not talking about that. <laughs> We're talking about new fit. Okay. So, um, so first point is, you know, essentially, you know, just so everybody knows, haven't read it yet. He sent it to me. It's the new fit method, but Garrett's going to go really, really deep on understanding how neurology is a huge, how fixing your neurology and how understanding to optimize it is a big component today in living fully optimized. But, uh, your first point is how to rehab from injury and surgery, um, and how neurology makes a huge difference. You know, it's really interesting, like you talk about just at, at the top of the show here and in several of your podcasts about how we create our own reality. And that is, of course, true in a metaphysical sense. It's true also in a, in a neurological sense. There's so many ways where our brains actually hold us back. Right. It's, it's in life, you know, we think about going to give a give a talk, public speaking, right, is, is one of the biggest fears for so many people. And that is part of the brain's way of saying, don't do that because that, there's a risk. It's threatening. You could embarrass yourself in front of the tribe and get kicked out of the tribe. And that could be a risk for survival if the tribe kicks you out. So there, our brains don't want us to do more or create a life of abundance or, or achieve the things that we think we wish to achieve. Our brains actually want us to do less. They want to keep us safe. They want to keep us in our comfort zone. And they want to stop us from doing things that are inherently risky or threatening or, or that we perceive to be risky or threatening, even if they aren't. And that is, you know, what we're really trying to do is take that same line of thinking and apply that to day-to-day -day physical therapy, chiropractic, sports medicine, rehabilitation for chronic pain and neurological injuries. And the, the big takeaway there is that the primary issue, the, the major factor that impairs and delays the healing process from when we're talking about someone who has chronic pain, someone who's recovering from a sports injury or other acute injury, someone who is recovering from surgery, the, the biggest problem often is that the protective responses to injury and trauma, how the brain imposes these patterns of guarding and protection and muscle inhibition and pain those actually limit and delay the healing process. And that's why a sprained ankle can take eight weeks if, it, if, it, you know, if it's a grade three and there's a tear. Uh, and we've seen that by, by working through those neurological protections, by, by recalibrating the brain and its protective and survival-based responses, we can help people recover in two or three weeks instead of eight sometimes and make these really miraculous changes. And there are times, there's a really interesting distinction between the software and the hardware of the body. The hardware is where most therapists, doctors, clinicians focus, you know, tissues, ligaments, tendons, bones, connective tissue. And the software is the nervous system and the signals that control the muscles and healing and hormones and all, you know, every, pretty much everything about the body that, that matters for health. And there are there are limitations, of course. You know, if something is torn or broken, there it does take time for things to heal. But so much of what we experience as pain and limitation is actually has a very strong functional component. And we've seen that by working on this functional neurological component, we can help people recover a lot faster from from injuries. We can help people recover a lot lot faster from surgeries. Help them reverse pain or or various limitations that they've had. 
for years. You know, we just had a guy in our office last week who hadn't touched his toes since he was five years old, and he's in his late 40s now. He, we got him to touch his toes for the first time. We got, uh, you know, another example is a football player that we saw in a Division One athletic training room who five days before we were there had his uh, a grade two to two and a half separation of his AC joint. So shoulder separation, partially torn ligament, couldn't lift his arm more than about 30 degrees from his side. And we did this mapping process to identify where his brain was imposing these protective patterns, where the nervous system was guarding and protecting and limiting him. And, you know, long story short, we found these spots on two different rotator cuff muscles, started stimulating them, had him work his arm up. A few minutes later, he was at horizontal. A few minutes more, his arm was up overhead. He looked up and he said, what the beep did you just do to me? Wow. And, and there, it's a great distinction between this, this the hardware and software sides of the coin because eight minutes is not anywhere near enough time for his ligaments to heal, right? It's, right. it's there's, right. No, there's no meaningful tissue healing. The difference was that we helped him reset and recalibrate that protective response where he was holding himself back from getting his arm up there. He could do it. He just wasn't letting himself express it. He wasn't allowing himself to express that or create that version of reality, if you will. And by helping, helping teach his brain or, or recalibrate his reaction there, he was able to get his arm all the way up overhead. He went and worked out with his team that day, played in the game that week when he thought he was going to miss three or four games. And, uh, it just shows that, you know, the way that, that, you know, of course the power that the brain has and how prioritizing the brain and nervous system can make a difference. And I think it, it really is a way to apply that same wonderful line of thinking in an empowering way to these situations with pain and injury and, and, you know, movement, body-based dysfunction. Amazing brother. Um, I can, you know, share my personal firsthand experience. I was in a really bad car accident on August 15th, literally pulled out of my subdivision, turned left, you know, legally and got run into full bore by an older man and his mom, who's extremely old and, uh, crazy story, not, not for this podcast, but I mean, I was, as a head on collision and my entire, uh, right hip and, uh, just the whole thing was just inwardly rotated. And so, I mean, even to this day, I still have, you know, as optimized as I am, I still have issues. And I went and saw my deep tissue guy yesterday who also does uh, cranial sacral, all sorts of stuff. And he told me straight up, he's like, man, you have changed your gait from being so, you know, neurologically out of balance or out of whack. As you said, you know, the hardware was crushed and the software was now deprogrammed or defragged or had to be defragged. And dude, I've been having this latent, uh, like a neurological pain in the, uh, you know, the essentially like in the inguinal right side of my, uh, right leg and into my psoas and, uh, you know, everywhere in that area, all the different mus muscle and physiology in that area. And like, dude, he yesterday deprogrammed. I mean, he went in and, you know, changed a lot of the patterning and the fi fiber innervation that I had had, you know, from just, again, a compensation, right? Because that's what ends up happening. We compensate. We change it. I changed my gait unknowingly, by the way. So I thought I had a, the beginning of a hernia. And after, you know, he looked at me and he was like, no, dude, but you got to do this, this, and this. And, you know, he completely rebalanced me. But um, it is amazing. The human body is a, like you said, a program with active hardware and if the program is not optimized tweaked you know get the signal to noise ratio down and obviously this is what you're doing literally through your technology through your book through all the stuff that you teach um things can go really bad really fast and you know we can amplify that by saying like if you don't take care of yourself if you eat like shit you don't exercise you don't move you know you're not doing any kind of internal work or mindfulness or any of that like it's pretty fast how fast you can degrade, de degrade cellularly, which is, you know, obviously inflammation, which leads to all the forms of dis-ease, you know, as we age. So um, it, it's it's very fascinating when you start looking at the way that you're looking at it, especially in the way you teach in the book. Awesome. Thank you. And, and yeah, I think that's a great, you know, really a great way to put it. You got to go in and get that, that defrag on the software and it's it's amazing how you know if you think about the amount of input from the the trauma of a car accident oh or a severe God. collision impact like that 
you know, that's a lot of a lot of input into your system sending you in a particular direction. And if we want to counter that and go in the opposite direction, it takes a lot of input. You know, if you think about like a, a balance beam or a right. seesaw, you need right. you need enough input to balance that out. And so it's either a little bit over time or you can do some more powerful, more intense work and and achieve that faster. But there is a critical mass a threshold of input that you need to reach in order to reverse the or or compensate for or correct the whatever you know whatever you did in response to that massive signal of something like a car accident. Hey guys, what's going on? If you're looking to level up your life from a mind, body and spiritual perspective, join the fully optimized health private membership group today. There is no better place online to discuss hormones, peptides, fitness, fat loss, supplements, and even raising your consciousness with an elite tribe of men and women. You also get to speak to me directly every single week in the Ask Me Anything. Join today. Go to fullyoptimizedhealth.com and sign up and I'll see you and talk to you soon. Well, I mean, it's crazy because, I mean, just for a second, dude, I thought I died. You know, I was at that level of Oh, okay. I'm out of here. And then the airbags deployed and boom, and then boom, tear all my skin off, which it's actually healed, which is amazing due to peptides, Shh, peptides. <laughs> right? Like tore all the skin off right here and tore all the skin off on my, uh, tib, my tib bib down there, you know, which I could have fractured, but I mean, obviously I'm a big, strong guy, so it didn't, but I mean, dude, I was blasted into next week. I just remember sitting on the curb, you know, when the EMT truck got there and everything, Hey man, you want to go in on the bus and everything? And, you know, I'm bleeding all over the place, but no, he's like, I, th I think you have a concussion. I'm like, I want to be like, no, fucking shit, I have a concussion. I've had concussions in my life. But, um, but yeah, dude, like that signal makes then, especially someone like me, who's very high energy, you know, okay, I'm going to go through this and I'm going to overcompensate and I'm going to do all these things, you know, to ignore it. But then, as you said, you know, the software eventually breaks down. So I truthfully had convinced myself, bro, that I had a hernia. And it was one of those things in my mind and in my life, psychologically, I never want to get a hernia because I know so many people that suffer from hernias. And as you know, as an athlete, that's the one thing you don't want to get, right? And you're like late 40s, mid 50s is a hernia, especially a really serious inguinal hernia. So he was like, you know, in 10 minutes, no, dude, you don't have a hernia, but we got to do some serious reprogramming. So um, so with that, like applying neurobiology and the things that you're doing to enhance fitness, can you kind of talk about like that kind of stuff? Cause I think most people think of your modality when they're injured, you know, how am I going to fix this? But I like to talk about optimization, right? I'm the optimization King. So like, how do we talk about doing what you do from an optimization health and fitness standpoint? Yeah, absolutely. That's a great topic. And there's, there's a, a lot of, you know, physical therapy or chiropractic clinics that work with patients, help them reach those early milestones, get out of pain, you know, work through that injury. A lot of them normally would, would, you know, lose those patients when they're done, right? They'd go somewhere else, but now they, uh, using the newbie, they have this kind of cool tool to transition them. And, and some people come in just for, for more fitness or optimization service services. And, they, one of the reasons they do it is, is very applicable in that transition phase. If you've just been injured, you're trying to get back into training. There is a significant risk of, you know, re-injury. If you don't, if you don't ramp up that progression and increase the level of challenge in the right rate, there's a, there's a significant risk of getting re-injured or going backwards, having to start over from square one, or at least, you know, go several steps back. And what this allows us to do is to use advanced technology to very precisely dial in the level of challenge to increase muscle recruitment and right. get the benefits of strength training. So, so we can put it on, on your muscles and, and dial up the signal to where you're going to get as much muscle recruitment as if you were lifting heavy weights, you're going to get the muscle building, the strength benefits and motor coordination movement benefits. You're going to get the hormonal benefits, metabolic benefits, get all that. But without the having to put, you know, put a ton of weight on your back or load your joints right. and get that much strain and risk of injury. So, so it allows people to build this very precise and powerful and also safe and sustainable way of training. And uh, it also allows us to, you know, by applying neurology to play into this same, especially if we're talking about performance, athletic performance, cognitive right. performance, you know, allows us to play into this same notion of how our brains hold us back, 
you know, if we're working with an athlete, for example, who's trying to increase his or her vertical jump, let's say, let's say this athlete can jump uh, 40 inches in the air, like what has the capability to do it, but can, but only right now is able to demonstrate 32 inches. Well, we know that their brain will only allow them to jump as high as it knows they can safely land from. And so being able to, being able to apply some of these other neurological strategies can be really helpful. Like we can have them step up onto a 40 inch box and just step off and land and work on landing to teach their brain that yes, it's okay to jump that high. It's okay. Cause we know we can land right. safely without getting injured. So showing the body, spending a lot of time in that landing and absorbing force phase and duplicating those same signals, amplifying those same signals with something like the newbie where another, th- another instance of that is strength. The, the, you know, our, our brains typically only let most of us walking around can only activate 30 to 40% of our muscle at any one moment in time. Right. It would be, we'd alternate this 30%, then that 30%, then that, then back to the beginning. Uh, a really accomplished lifter can, can activate something like 70 or 80% of their muscles. Their brain will let them hack into their system right. and activate more. The, the trick therefore is to not necessarily to think about building new muscle first i mean if that's your goal we can certainly help you with that but the the trick for strength and performance is to first learn to tap into and use the muscle that you already have available to you if you're only exactly. using 30 percent, you could use 70 percent. you could more than double your strength right. without right. having to build any new muscle and so teaching that that's a neurological skill so being able to enhance muscle recruitment and send those signals neurologically with technology like this can help you accelerate that process of gaining strength. So I want to stay there for a second. I I didn't know we were going to go here. This is amazing though. Like I talk about this a lot when I podcast or lecture, which isn't very often anymore. Hopefully that's about to change uh, about recruiting muscle fibers, like maximally firing and enervating fibers. And I always say that the majority of people and again, this is not a condemnation or a judgment, but the majority of people never actually develop an amazing physique that, you know, one that they feel amazing about because they don't know how to recruit fibers maximally, right? Like, let's be honest, right? You go to any average gym in any part of the United States and you watch average people lifting with average trainers. They don't understand, again, as I call it, like how to re- eliminate ego and I'm sorry, reduce e- or <laughs> eliminate ego and momentum, both. Mm-hmm. Right. Like they're herky jerky. They're looking around at the people in the gym and they're like, you know, I got to do this or I got to do that because my ego says I got to do this amount. And it's like, so, and then, you know, you replicate that process over 25, 30, 40 years of your life going to the gym, Garrett, and you never get to that point. So, you know, I, I think of the newbie and that technology as a hack. I mean, it's literally a cheat code for people to learn to, Again, as you said, you know, recruit 70% when they're actually only able for the most part without, you know, again, genetically gifted or just an elite coach, performance coach to get beyond 30 to 35%. It's funny you use that word uh, cheat code. We just did some content with Saquon Barkley, the NFL running back. So nice. he, right. uh, uh, he had last year, so the beginning of the 2020 season, torn ACL, MCL, meniscus. <laughs> had surgery and his recovery had stalled. I mean, he was, he was still in pretty bad shape about six (laughs) six months post-surgery. And we got connected with him. He started using the newbie and he said on day one, we haven't, you know, on this video we did together, he says, the first time I used it, I could feel my VMO muscle wake up. That's the quad muscle just up and inside the knee. And then it helped to change the trajectory of his rehab. And he, you know, he loved it. And so he was graciously willing to you know, do some content with us and, and put his name behind it. And That's amazing, bro. Congratulations. Uh, that VMO oh. muscle for a running back. Once oh, that yeah. guy, you're done. And you also said something that triggered me. And I'm sorry. I went back to my youth for just a second. I'm 50 <laughs> and I'm well beyond it. But man, you said 40 inch vertical. I, dude, I had a 39 inch vertical. <laughs> But I can never get 40. But uh, but no, it's incredible. Let's do like, it I now. Always, it's not too late, Jay. Dude, man. <laughs> I always – it's funny, right? Because, like, I, I actually, I'll share some funny things with you. Like, uh, you know, that's one of the things. I was an amazing dunker. And, you know, now people come up to me and they say, um, if I put, if they, somebody put a gun to your head right now, could you still dunk? And honestly, bro, I couldn't because I just – I don't – obviously, I don't train for that anymore. I don't even play basketball. But – it's interesting to think like, well, if I use the newbie right for a month and then I 
specificity of my training was to be able to dunk a basketball again. I bet you I could, right? Without question. Because I just remember it. Sounds like a good experiment. I mean, <laughs> Are you going to send me a newbie, bro? Yeah, so there we go. Let's do it. Uh, Let's do that. <laughs> I'm not joking. Let's do be, it. I mean, I've actually had people say that to me. They're like, you know, it, one of my biggest downfalls in life is that, you know, I'm too old. I, I, I miss the, you know, the screen and the phone. I, so the videos that I have of me dunking in my mid twenties were literally like camcorder, <laughs> you know, hoop it up three on three tournaments. I entered the dunk contest. I mean, I tell people this and they don't believe it, but I mean, I entered the dunk contest at Huntington beach, big time three on three tournament. And I won it two years in a row from 96 and 97, which was in the open. Right. So, I mean, like, you know, here's a white guy, you know, competing against the open deal. And like, I didn't do it. I could dunk. Right. That was like a good thing. And I spent a lot of time jumping and practicing my dunks and doing all that, but I don't have a single video, bro. Then it's like, they, they were on the, happens, remember those you know? little, well, do you remember they were on those little VHS miniatures? If you remember back in the day, Oh yeah. I have no idea what happened to them, but I mean, I had people that were, you know, recording at them and, you know, Whenever I was at one of those things, I would say, hey, man, here's my address. I'd love for you. I'll pay for it. You know, send me a copy of it. And they did. I had probably had like three or four copies, but in the moves and in my life and going in the next 20 to 25 years, I lost them all. So I have nothing. But yes, let's talk after the show. That would be supremely cool. Uh, I don't play basketball. I don't jump. <laughs> I don't put my body in any position anymore where I could li literally injure uh, you know, the lumbar region or anything like that. But I think that would be cool. So let's definitely talk about that. Um, okay, so talk about direct current uh, versus alternating current. Uh, well, so uh, just, I don't know if I mentioned it, but the reason I brought up Saquon was that the uh, he used that in the, in the video we did together. He used that word. He called it his cheat code because it helped him just activate that muscle right away. That's amazing. Uh, and so yeah. when you use that word, it, it, you know, it triggered my mind, of course, there. Uh, and the that really is a is a great segue into direct current like you just said so so part of what makes this technology different if anyone's watching you know if you're listening you can't see but you know, right behind me if you're watching the video is the the newbie device which stands for neurobioelectric stimulator and part of what makes the newbie unique is the fact that it uses direct current as opposed to alternating current and it's a really interesting history here so just for a little bit of context because Direct current, there were benefits known, you know, 40, 50 years ago. And there was also one big problem, which was when you turn it up to a high enough level to really make a difference, the direct current would cause charges to accumulate and dissipate heat and you would burn the skin. So people would get burns using direct current and it literally got thrown out because of that. And in its place came alternating current and virtually every device that's out there these days is alternating current for that reason. And the only direct current devices that survived were essentially microcurrents, little tiny currents that you don't even feel. And that's more for like increasing blood flow to the area and things like that. And that, that ended up being my first exposure to direct current, which is sort of what, you know, one of the major steps that led me on this, on this journey. But the, the issue with alternating current going back to that line of conversation is that when you turn it up to a high enough level to really make a difference, that, that alternating current, that signal volleys back and forth. You don't get charge buildup, right? You don't get the burn, so it feels comfortable to the skin. But as that signal oscillates back and forth, you end up causing muscles to co-contract and fight against each other. Positive, negative, positive, negative. It's like getting muscles on the front and back, front and back. So it's like you were, if you're driving your car, hitting the throttle and the brake pedal at the same time, resisting your own movements, that's obviously inefficient. So we're wasting energy at, you know, at best, at worst, setting the body up for injury because we want to be pliable and that's training the muscles to stiffen and fight each other. So the, the downs, there is a downside. You can, there are some benefits to alternating current at lower levels, but when you try to get into this realm of really creating neurological adaptations where you need to intensify the signal, you need to create some sort of progressive overload, you end up running into that you know, low ceiling. You end up running right. into those issues with the limitations with the alternating current. And so we found that with direct current, we can actually bypass a lot of those protective muscle contractions and speak more powerfully and more precisely to the nervous system. So we can get that re-education effect in the nervous system in the brain. And we can make these changes a lot faster where like this football player I was talking about was able in eight minutes to, to get his arm all the way up overhead, you know, for the first time in five days. 
and weeks ahead of schedule. And it has to do with being able to tap into the nervous system to create those functional changes, to be able to map around, scan around on the body and identify where the, the hypersensitivity is or, or the different patterns associated with those neurological protective responses, and then send the signal to re-educate and recalibrate them very quickly. So the direct current allows us to do all these things neurologically that you just can't quite do with the alternating current devices. So it, it allows us to do have these more sophisticated protocols and programs, and it's it's really predicated on that unique effect of the direct current, both functionally and also what it can do to promote and accelerate healing. And that's uh, that's something I noticed firsthand. I mentioned one of my first experiences in this realm was was with those direct current more in that microcurrent realm, those lower yeah. currents. But I I saw it firsthand when I, I played college ice hockey, had some torn ligaments in my wrist. And I was supposed to have surgery, be out for several months, and thank thankfully, you know serendipitously, I, I don't even know if I consciously created this part, but uh, fortunately met a chiropractic neurologist who introduced me one to functional neurology and right. this, this concept of how the, you know, the neurological response to injury and two direct current. And we used a, a more primitive microcurrent type device. And that I saw firsthand how that helped stimulate those ligaments to heal. What was that? that? Was it the dolphin? What was the primitive device? Uh, no, really? it was uh, it was an older one, like a, a, a microcurrent. I forget. The oh, brand. okay. Yeah. Hey guys and gals, what's going on? If you're looking to use peptides, make sure you go to my number one source, Limitless Life Nootropics, for healing with BPC one fifty seven and TB five hundred, or fat loss with ipamorelin, CGC one two nine five, and AOD nine six zero four, to immunity with TA one, thymus and alpha one. Limitless has a huge selection. Go to LimitlessLifeNootropics.com and use my code J15 to take 15% off your purchase. I send you guys tremendous love and light. Yeah, no, I know what you're talking about. Dude, yeah. I used that shit when I was in college. They had them when I was in college playing basketball, I remember. Yeah. I mean, you know, that it was it was the stimulant. But uh, this is all fascinating to me because, you know, if I go back into like the bigger picture of energy and frequency, this is an electric universe, right? Like at base essence. We are plasmatic balls of fire, you know, standing waves and vibrating electrons inhabiting these meat suits. And so in truth, like your technology is enabling that energy and frequency of electricity to fire and enervate and relearn and re-stimulate what goes wrong from day-to-day -day life or from traumatic injury. And again, we're all experiencing trauma walking around every day in some capacity, right? Like I always, you know, even with my company, with like, you know, our, our hair stuff, like people are, you know, receiving micro inflammations, right. Which are essentially traumas to the scalp from, you know, day-to-day -day walk life, exposure to sun elements, toxic minerals, you know, whatever. And so it's, it's, it's crazy. Like, you know, you can use specific peptides, um, obviously to increase angiogenesis and also, you know, the all to alter the molecular cascade to the scalp. Um, to enhance, you know, again, growth and all that stuff. But that's a whole nother conversation. But uh, I mean, basically you guys have created a device that is able to manipulate the waveform of energy and frequency in this universe. And it's so amazing because, I mean, honestly, I'm thinking to myself right now, like, fuck, if I had a newbie, bro, this whole thing with my leg would have been solved a month and a half ago. Perhaps. I mean, probably. <laughs> no, I mean, I already yeah. know. I, mean, I remember yeah. I, I demoed it. When you guys that's, that's right. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Uh, so I, mean, know, I, I already know that it would have. Another, another, I mean, I'm, I'm very optimistic it would have too, but I try not to overpromise without knowing more of the details. Uh, I got you. The uh, interesting thing that you mentioned, and I totally agree, you know, that the universe is frequency and oscillation and vibration. And so one of the more interesting avenues that we've really been exploring in the last, you know, we've had our product out for about four years. In the last one and a half, We've been, been really exploring the effects of different frequencies a lot more. And so we've found some of these old charts, for example, from, from different practitioners who mapped out certain frequencies that they believed would resonate with certain tissues. So right. Just, right. Like, just like if I go out and have my, my car keys in the parking lot you know, and I unlock my car, it only unlocks my car. It doesn't unlock the one next to it. It doesn't unlock the one across the parking lot. It just resonates with my car. Likewise, right. if we use particular frequencies, we can send that signal more specifically to to cartilage, to tendons, to ligaments, to discs, to 
organs even you know that's so, that's a little bit outside the scope of so no 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 it's not so you guys probably use royal rife's stuff right you so guys he would that chart he we've i've seen some of that i haven't used his technology but i'm familiar he was definitely one of the pioneers oh yeah in this and his name just came up in a conversation i was having earlier today funny enough there are no cool i was gonna say <laughs> there are no coincidences in the universe it's only synchronicities but i mean dude i actually have a rife machine at my house i don't use it it was gifted to me cool um, that dude is at a whole different level you realize i mean i don't want to you know, the Google gods are listening, but they've like wiped most of his information. You know that they've wiped most of his information. Yeah. I, I, um, I want to see, I'm actually, especially now with this conversation where his name's come up a second time in the same day. Uh, I want to dive a little deeper into what he was doing. Some of the frequencies that we use, uh, are, are from a doctor named Carol McMakin, who is in, up in the Pacific Northwest, originally a chiropractor by training. And so she is now the the champion and lead instructor for uh, frequency specific microcurrent. And she teaches the use of these frequencies and, and we can adapt those and use those with our device. So we've done some collaboration with her and really seen some, some wonderful outcomes, but wow. it's uh, I mean, if you, if you talk about wanting to address specific tissues, like there's, there's cases where some look at something like transverse myelitis, for example, which right. is a very debilitating neurological disease that is literally inflammation of the spinal cord yes so so there the it's an autoimmune condition where the, the body's immune system attacks the tissue in, the, in its own spinal cord and that cause of course the spinal cord sends signals everywhere in the body it's the relay right. station for everything so it can cause you know very significant impairments throughout the whole body extreme pain yeah and yeah. so we can dial a specific frequency for the spinal cord for example and help reduce pain, improve function, provide this wonderful re-education effect and, and have it be directed there. So we've seen, you know, profound before and after changes, you know, in, in a session where someone will be able to take their first steps in, in months or, you know, really have these glimpses of what's possible very quickly. And, yeah. you know, of course, you don't just resolve the whole thing in one session, but to make progress for someone who hasn't made progress in months or years to make progress in one session is so cool because it inspires that, that individual to want to continue. It motivates them to do more of it and to see that, oh my gosh, there might be something that can actually work. Garrett, don't worry, bro. When this runs, whenever it runs, we'll probably be in uh, maybe, maybe December, but either December or early January, you know, this will be the newbie is the cheat code. That's right. <laughs> no, bro, for sure. hundred <laughs> percent. Um, Okay. So like final question, and then you can tell people how they can get it. But I mean, you know, like who is this for? I mean, obviously chiropractors, functional medicine doctors. Um, I mean, I, so to put my woo hat, my woo woo hat on, um, my, my belief is that this is for any quantum healer, like anybody who does energy work, hand work, massage work, deep tissue work, they should have a newbie, right? I would, I would agree with that. I mean, I definitely would, you know, where, where it's used mostly as of today is physical therapy clinics, sports medicine, chiropractic offices, and then also uh, clinics that work with more neurological injuries or impairments like stroke patients, MS sure. patients, spinal cord injury. Um, and then also some more, you know, fitness and performance oriented places as well. It is, it is a medical device. So they have to have you know, a medical professional or, or have, you know, someone on, on their team that has that level of expertise and uh, credential. So, you know, for, for, if anyone's listening to this and is interested in, in potentially experiencing it for themselves, the best bet is probably to go to our website, which is www.new.fit. That's N E U like neurological.fit and uh, click at the top, a link for patients, and then you can find the directory. So, so if you're interested in trying it out, there's a directory of practitioners and just type in your city and uh, or zip code and it'll pull up anyone within, you know, 40 or 50 miles of you. And hopefully there's someone near you. If, you know, there are people for whom it doesn't work to go see somebody or there isn't somebody near nearby that's convenient enough. Um, so we do have people who rent or buy their own devices and use at home. And we have a team of in-house physical therapists who can do telehealth, just like you, do, you and I are talking on the video here, can do assessments and write custom programs for people remotely around the world. 
Um, so that's definitely an option as well. How are you going to link up the newbie to their physiology while you're on a Zoom call? Oh, oh, oh well, we haven't we haven't <laughs> figured out how to apply it through the through the computer yet. Oh, that, see, that's but, the key. Yeah, I, I see. It's just a solution down the road. That's right. We'll, we will figure it out in this matrix, man. There we go. <laughs> it's an honor to have you on the show today, brother. Uh, guys, look, you can see his Instagram, their Facebook. Um, obviously, it's New Fit dot com right www.newfit.com that's correct uh yep yeah you can go yep. there that forward that forwards to our website it's actually i mentioned earlier it's new.fit so right. newfit.com forward somebody there. somebody's hi- cyber stalking your uh your domain just like mine like somebody has jcampbell.com it's a no it's it's not a site so i had to put my middle initial in there you know i i know at some point i'll get that email hey <laughs> We had, we had the same thing. You. So we had the same thing for the reason we have new.fit is because newfit.com was taken and it was it was I, we tried to reach out to the people for years and then they finally let it lapse and it went up for auction. So <laughs> so I, I was on there. I was watching it at the down to the final second to make sure we won and we won the auction. That's awesome, man. Congratulations <laughs> on that. Well, listen, brother, I really appreciate you coming on the Jay Campbell podcast today. Um, final final thoughts or words. Uh, well, I'm, I'm really grateful to be on here. I love what you're doing. And I, I do agree with you that we can create our own reality through the power of intention. And um, I think that this, you know, our technology and approach can can really enable and empower people to accelerate the rate at which you're making changes to create these specific adaptations, help people work towards their goals and get back to what they love. And uh, I definitely invite anyone who's, who's interested to try it out, either with a practitioner or if there isn't one nearby and reach out to our team. Beautiful, man. I really appreciate you coming on. So guys, obviously support the amazing people that come on to the Jay Campbell podcast. The newbie is amazing. I have used it personally. I don't have one. I probably should have one. Uh, But if you are injured, make sure you go to the links in this video and that will be found at the bottom of this video in the YouTube broadcast notes uh, to find a practitioner in your area. And remember, raise your vibration to optimize your love creation. We will see you guys very soon.